Hello and welcome to another Marketing Sherpa webinar. We've got a great B2B lead gen case study for you. And this is especially great for all these Marketing Sherpa webinars we do. We have a lot of big companies on that have lots of resources. And sometimes we hear back from you, the viewer, and you say, hey, that's great, I'm a smaller company, I don't have as many resources. Well, for the SMB marketer, we got something great for you today. Really a, a campaign you can replicate yourself, almost by yourself, really hands-on, really startup mentality. If you're a big company, you can learn a lot too. You'll probably have a lot more resources to throw out what is essentially just a really good idea. And that idea came from Bob Burge, the Director of Marketing for Blue Pillar. Thanks for joining us today, Bob. Thanks, Daniel. My pleasure, and uh, thanks for all you guys do at Marketing Sherpa. I appreciate it. Uh, so I'm here in Jacksonville, Florida. We are actually live streaming from our studios today. We got Bob up in Indianapolis joining us. You can. We're testing this out, but if you want to try it out for a more engaging, interactive experience, go to marketingsherpa.com/live-webinar, and you can see an actual video stream of our conversation with the slides mixed in. Um, and also, we try to make these webinars. If you've attended before, it's not so much a presentation. It's an interview. A lot of those questions in that interview come from you. We want to be able to serve you, the live audience, as much as we possibly can. So you can ask your questions through hashtag SherpaWebinar on Twitter. You can also share what B2B lead gen tactics and marketing tactics in general have worked for you. And you can use the Q&A function in GoToWebinar to ask your questions as well. Uh, we'll also, through Twitter, through hashtag SherpaWebinar, be sharing a lot of additional resources that you can use to improve your own marketing. So really, remember, it's not a webinar. We're not specifically trying to present slides. The slides are just there to help us answer questions that you have. So please ask your questions, we'll throw them to Bob, and we'll see what we can all learn together. But let's start, Bob, by getting an understanding of Blue Pillar so we can understand your case study. What, what is Blue Pillar? Uh, yeah, Blue Pillar, uh, like you mentioned, we're headquartered in Indianapolis. Uh, we have uh, customers that we serve from all around the country. Uh, we're a critical power technology company, and uh, uh, if, if power is important to you, uh, that's what we do. We, we are an enterprise software company that uh, uh, provides the back-end support uh, to be able to monitor and control all the complex systems that, that, that kind of make that up. And so we can understand how you targeted your campaign. Give me an idea of the type of industries you serve. What, what are your verticals? Yeah, we, you know, we, we, we work across industries. You know, we were founded uh, at Duke University Medical Center. And, uh, and, and hospital and health systems have been an important part of our, our makeup from the beginning. Uh, but but any, any industry that is dependent uh, on critical power uh, is, uh, is a client or a prospect for us. And, and that includes you know, manufacturing, it includes data centers, that's very important, universities, uh, research uh, facilities. We have uh, military bases that uh, are, are clients. Uh, and again, government, we have government clients. Uh, if power is important to you, if, if critical power is important, uh, we want to be there. Okay. So let's start with the problem you face. This is a problem that many companies and many marketers on the phone will face as well. And, and the reason I love this problem is what we have here is just a classic hero's journey. So I'm, my background is a, as a writer, so of course I love storytelling. But we're going to go through the classic hero's journey that you faced, Bob, and it started by why you had to leave and go off on that journey was you had a problem. What was your problem? Yeah, you know, as the slide says, reaching the right person. And uh, we know and we're very confident that when we get in front of the right person, uh, people that can understand what we do and, and the complexities of it, good things happen. A light goes off and, and we're off and running, but that first step needs to happen, get in front of the right person, and sometimes that's a lot more difficult than it sounds. Let's talk about how you took that approach. So, as, as you are saying, in many companies, it's hard when you have a complex sale to understand who that right person is, so you just went straight to the top, huh? Yeah, and it's people that can make the decisions. And, and you know, in today's economy, uh, you know, budgets are getting uh, tightened. Uh, there are fewer people doing more things. And so it's a very busy world out there. And, and so uh, getting in front of that right person uh, that understands what you do is a big part of the challenge, but also somebody that can make decisions. Uh, if, if you're in front of somebody that gets it, but they're, they have no budget, they have no decision-making capabilities, then that becomes a big hurdle we have to go through. And so it's that mix of the right decision-makers with the right audience. Yeah, so that sounds like a marketer very passionate about his product. You get me in front of the right people, you get this message in front of the right people, they're going to be interested. So 
Let's talk about some ways you'd try to do that. I think first you tried to purchase a list, right? Purchase an email list. Yeah, we had um, we had uh, purchased an email list, and and, and these were um, C-suite executives, and and uh, with email addresses and information about them uh, in, in the markets that we were looking to 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 penetrate, and uh, you know it had things that we were looking for. It had the names and the titles and those kind of things, and more importantly, the email addresses, which is often an elusive part. Uh, it had all that stuff, uh, and then. Uh, and then we needed to, um, hey, what were we going to do next? You know, we have this information. How do we best get a hold of them? And we did what uh, a lot of people did. Um, we tried to make cold calls, and we, uh, and we sent out emails. And uh, because these are people we did not have relationships with, they did not know who we were. And so it was kind of that first entree into uh, bringing us to market. So let's talk about the results of, of that effort. Yeah, we had... Um, uh, we had sent out um, some email, and we did an email campaign, and uh, asking for a, um, uh, I think we this particular one we targeted about 200 individuals, and uh, it was a very short email, uh, CEO to CEO, asking for a brief briefing. Uh, we we termed it an executive briefing on a topic to help them reduce uh, operating expenses, and it was uh, you, you know very simple to the point. Uh, I will have our executive assistant contact your executive assistant to get that meeting set up. And again, that was a, a, a common goal. We want to get our top people talking to their top people. And so in theory, I think it made some sense. Uh, from that, um, there was really only, uh, as we did the follow-up to try to, to, to get some, uh, some traction with that, uh, there was really only one executive briefing out of that initial batch of 200 that went out. And you know, and I should, yeah, and I should, I should also then, uh, in all disclosure, uh, when we did have that um, that follow up briefing, um, it never happened. The person we had scheduled with and confirmed uh, did not make it to the meeting. So we we thought we had one, and we actually went from batting. I don't know what's the batting average on one out of two hundred. I think is uh, fi batting fifty. Uh, 050 in baseball, and so in that case, um, no, it's even much worse than that. And and uh, we actually ended up with zero, and, and zero out of 200 is much easier to figure out. <laughs> I can even calculate that one. Uh, yeah, so, and first of all, I want to thank Bob for being so transparent in, you know, he's going to share some of his successes coming up, but also showing how he failed. A lot of marketers, after they watch a marketing trip or webinar or a case study in general, they, they come away with some great advice, but then they always say to us, like, oh, boy, I have so much to do. <laughs> I'm doing so poorly. So it's always great for people like you, Bob, to share these stories and say, hey, even, even successful marketers, they have their struggles here and there. Um, but so let's let's look at what you you tried to do next when that email campaign didn't work. Well, yeah, we we had um, we had used a uh, lead generation company and and that uh, that had done some good work for us and, and the challenge was very similar. We want to uh, we want you to help us set up meetings with with, uh, with, with some of our target audiences and so um, uh, we used them. You know, they did all the research and so the goal there was to have face to face meetings. You know, we want to come into your market, come into your facilities. We want to present, again, going back on the premise that when we get in front of that right audience, we have an absolute killer uh, solution. And so when, when, when we're in front of that right crowd, we are very excited, we are very confident that good things happen. But again, as I mentioned earlier, that's the challenge. So we, the next plan was, hey, let's set up face-to-face -face meetings, let's go out there, let's get in front of folks, and let's make some, let's make some noise. And, and, and that was our intention going in, that was our goal. And, um, but it didn't quite end up uh, like we had hoped. Yeah, so from these meetings that were set up, you went from Indianapolis, you took the time, you went down to Texas, and how did these meetings turn out, these three meetings you had? Yeah, I would, uh, you know, we did have three meetings scheduled. Uh, and again, uh, three meetings is better than no meetings. And uh, so we were excited about that. Um, confirmation's done. Uh, you, you know, people were scheduled to come in from, from different points uh, into the meeting, into those that series of meetings. and. Um, you know, once we were on the ground, we learned that of those three, two had canceled. So now we're down to just one meeting. And, um, you know, and when that uh, meeting happened, uh, we quickly learned that we were in front of an assistant to an assistant. And in uh, and, and the first five minutes, it was thrown out to us that uh, not only were there no decision-making capabilities, but there was also no budget, and they didn't quite understand what we did, and so that that meeting was um, 
I guess, somewhat uh, frustrating, if you could call it a meeting at that. Yeah, so we're, we're at strike two, and, and so if we look at kind of that hero's journey that Bob's on, we're, we're really at the end of Empire Strikes Back right here. It looks like things aren't too well in the universe, but as you know, Bob's on here today just to share a success. Found a really interesting way to bounce back that we're going to get to in just a moment that you can use as well. In the meantime, Bob, I'm going to give you one or two questions to, to chew on and think about, and then I'm going to come back and, uh, and uh, get to those. So Pat wanted to know what your email uh, open rates are, and Cammy was asking where are the open click-through rates on that first email campaign, and Neil wanted to know three meetings out of how many. So I have one or two things to tell the audience about, but let's come back and, and get a little more data about um, how those campaigns are working out for you, and then get into the campaign that was really successful. So uh, one thing I want to let the audience know about is web optimization. Web Optimization Summit. You can hear even more inspiring stories and learnings at Web Optimization Summit 2014 in New York City. We've just announced some new companies to our agenda. We've got case studies from American Express, Ancestry.com, and even a great speaker from Harvard University. So you can visit marketingsherpa.com slash webopt for more information. And actually, we've also just launched the call for speaker for Lead Gen Summit in San Francisco. So if anyone is on the line, you have a case study you'd like to share, uh, you can you can fill out that call for speakers. We'll tweet that link through hashtag Sherpa Webinar. And Bob, what's it like to be a speaker at a Marketing Sherpa Summit? Because you were a speaker at Email Summit. I was. I was at the Email Summit uh, in February. And uh, for me, it was, a, it was an excellent experience. I mean, uh, I, I got to work with, with people on your staff on the front end. Uh, you guys did a lot of the heavy lifting, which was very uh, necessary for my schedule. Uh, came up with some wonderful graphics and, and, and again, kudos to your staff. Uh, but the, uh, just the, the, the whole time, I mean, I also got to attend other sessions and, and other events. Uh, the whole program was very well organized and, you know, I, we go to conferences, we attend conferences, and, and, and this is as good as, as any that I have seen. It was, and also the atmosphere that went with it, you know, the, the, it was, a lot of people and uh, facing very similar problems that are looking for very similar solutions so there was a certain collegiality that that went on at the email summit and i was just very thrilled to be part of it well thank you bob and, and thanks for taking the time to be part of it and we hope you watching will share your stories as well i um, also want to thank the oracle marketing cloud for sponsoring this webinar and making us able to bring it available free to you today uh, you can learn how modern marketers use oracle marketing cloud to create ideal customers and increase revenue by attending the modern marketing tour it's a free full day event in a city near you you can go to events.eloqua.com mmt and they actually have events uh, all around the world so if you're tuning in from outside of the united states you're welcome to join as well but all right bob we're going to get into now some of the solutions uh for how you how you were actually able to improve your results after facing a few of those setbacks but let's go back to some of those questions can you can you Give us a little idea of how those emails performed. Obviously, we saw your ultimate KPI of setting up those executives' meetings didn't work out, but were people opening them? Were they clicking? Were they responding? Yeah, I mean, uh, we we had identified our key players. I mean, we, we knew our market. Um, and so, uh, you know, that part went fine. Uh, it was really more on the execution uh, or, or the lack of results that we got hurt. Uh, and then, you know, we needed to establish a connection. And so, um, you know, those are two important steps. You know, who, who you're trying to reach, and then uh, uh, and, and then what do you do to establish that connection? And that's kind of where we were stumbling. Um, Click-through rates were relatively poor, and I, uh, again, the the way I'm always amazed. You know, in the email summit, this came up, and when people are talking about, you know, they're sending out mass email in the thousands, and, and they get real excited, you know, if they get a 1.5% click-through rate, and they increase that to 3%, um, you know, they've, they've got 100% improvement on their click-throughs. And I guess the way I look at that is, my God, I got 97% of the people that aren't even opening my email. And so I look at it as kind of the other side of that equation, uh, I, I, you know, I, I would rather meet, reach a much more targeted audience and have as many people, if not every one of them, recognizing what I'm sending out. And so that's where we kind of concluded that, hey, we, we, we tried the email, we had the folks, uh, but it wasn't great for introductions. The other couple things I need to add um, first is that we had, um, uh, when we did that, uh, it was based on uh, volume and so we are like I mentioned earlier we had 200 that we sent out and um, and again we ended up with one and the one turned to zero 
I, and I think you got sometimes got to pull back because much of this is based on a premise uh, on a study that came out in 2012 that the average business person uh, gets in excess of 100 email a day. And you might say, well, I only get you know 50 or so, but there's somebody else that's getting 150 and, and, and whatever. And so that's, that's, that was from an average from two years ago. That, that poor guy who has to make up the average for you, if you're only getting 50, you're, like, <laughs> you're pretty lucky. And, and, and I just came back uh, from spring break, and when I got back, uh, I had been on a cruise, and so I wasn't able to, you know, the, the, the situation now with most people when you go on vacation, you keep up on your email just so you don't have to come back to such huge numbers. And I wasn't able to do that. And so when I came back, I had over a thousand email that I had to sort through. And so, you know, to, along with everything else, and so just, you know, keep that in mind as people are, are, are sorting through clutter. And, and uh, in fact, uh, conversations that talk about email and, and, the, and the topic message. But, man, I was on auto delete, boom, 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 as, as, as quickly as I could. And I, I sure hope I didn't delete anything important. But we realized that, that email wasn't really a great way to introduce our company. And, 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 and I think our results showed that. Yeah, so Kevin, who's in marketing, wanted to know, what about adding phone calls with email and postal mail? And I think that kind of gets into what you ended up deciding to do, right? That is exactly right. And, and I think uh, to, to, to a, a similar thing, I mean, go back and look at your own practices. Um, you know, how many, how many personal phone calls are you getting today? And I know, uh, you know, I don't get near as many. I mean, I don't, you know, if I'm getting 100 email a day, I'm not getting 100 calls a day, I'll tell you that. And so... That's an important part of this equation that, that I'll touch on in a second, but, but personal phone calls are, are, are a real important part. Yeah, and so for those who joined late to fill you in, we've got Bob Burge here, the director of marketing at Blue Pillar. He's got a great SMB B2B lead case study, and one of the things he did was use a dimensional mailer, and I want to get into the cost of that dimensional mailer, Bob. Tim, who's a CEO, wants your advice. What is the best cost for the mailing portion? Well, um, you know, in this particular campaign, um, you know, we had uh, initially the, the, ve the very first one that I put together, uh, it was last year, early part of the summer, uh, I had budgeted as uh, $1,000 and uh, my unit cost per target was about $10 and so I was going to be able to reach 100 individuals for that $1,000 budget. And so, again, going back to that earlier list, uh, you know, 100 C-suite uh, level or director level type individuals we identify um, and then the, the overall budget of, of roughly a thousand dollars and then um, you, you know which we're going to talk about in a little bit how do you know what what pieces did that include and how did we target that because one of the things we did is we knew the the organizations we were trying to reach but you also increase your success rate when you have multiple people identified uh, at each organization because if you do a one-on-one -on -one, if it's one person for one organization and you, you you don't have any luck with that one person, you're you're kind of done. So, if you identify three or four people, um, you got a better chance of, of reaching uh, the right person, helping them find the right person for you. That was another important part of this, using the C-suite to help us identify who is the right fit, who who is the person most responsible. Um, and, and so that's another thing to keep in mind. It's not a hundred hundred units, hundred organizations. It's more like twenty organizations, twenty five organizations four or five pieces at each organization, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, and, and we got a question here uh, uh, from Mohammed. He says, hi, I'm from Egypt. I work as a marketer. My question is, why is my email campaign not effective? Please answer. And of course, that there could be a wide range of reasons why email campaigns aren't effective. But one of the key elements, as Bob was talking about earlier, is getting that email to the right people. Uh, you don't have to have this huge list. Get to the right people. And as we look at your campaign goals here, the list cleanse and management part was really interesting to me because so in the past you, you bought that list and you worked for a, a lead agency, an outside lead agency. But this list you really built yourself and wanted to have a quality list and then you know learn from how people engage with that list, uh, how good of a list it was. So can you tell us a little bit about how you how you selected this list that was ultimately successful? Yeah, we, we, we really did build it ourselves. We used some of the research we'd had before, but another lesson we learned from our email campaign uh, before was we got a lot of uh, just email returned and and, uh, and that's always very frustrating when your your inbox is filling up with returned cannot deliver email and and we did experience a lot of that as well and so you know we um, we did things the old-fashioned way I mean we knew that the organizations we were trying to reach we went online we did research we used uh, things like LinkedIn we visited websites and so I tried to build those lists including phone numbers 
as best we could, including email. Um, but again, the one thing that's real easy to find is their mailing address. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and Susan on hashtag Sherpa webinar asked, how did Bob Burge identify the 100 individuals to send his dimensional mailer for? I hope that answers your question. That was really key, going to the mailing address, you know, not just trying to find the email address, which can be harder to find. So let, let's look at your campaign timeline and how that dimensional mailer tied in with email. We have a question here from Pat who asked, $10 per touch or for multiple touches combined? I think $10, that's for that first dimensional mailer touch, right? We're not talking about every phone call and email. Yeah, that's right. That, that's for the, 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 uh, the mailer on the, on the left. And, and uh, the other thing is, um, you know, so I, I timed this uh, early last summer, this initial campaign, and we've done several since because of the results, but the initial campaign was early last summer. I know I had gotten, I had actually used a mini Louisville Slugger years ago and had great success. I was in one of the offices that we used that with somebody that had received it and it's still sitting there and it's uh, still sitting in their office. And so I thought, you know what, it's baseball season, let's try something different. And so I put together a package that you see the tube there, that was kind of a heavy duty tube. I think that cost us about 50 cents. And then a couple pieces of collateral on Blue Pillar. Uh, you know, here's a little bit of an explanation and illustration of who we are and what we do. And then the personal letter. And again, when I mentioned about uh, P-mail, that's what we call it. Uh, it's personalizing that letter. So it speaks to not only them, but it makes a reference to where they're located, how many facilities they have. There's two or three spots within the letter that, uh, that, that they know I'm speaking directly to them. And that's the intention. It's, it's to, to say, hey, this is especially for you. And that was part of the thing. And so that goes out, that gets mailed. We'd have a production day here. Those would get dropped in the mail. And then we would wait about two weeks. You want to make sure that, you know, the mail catches up and gets to them. So you'd probably want to wait about two weeks, 10 days to two weeks, but I'd err towards two weeks. And then the follow-up phone calls. Uh, and, and again, the, uh, that's when you're calling. And, and when we're calling at the C-suite and director level, uh, a lot of times, almost always, you're going to get an executive assistant. But the other thing I have found is they can be very helpful. And so it's real important to develop a relationship with them. And what we were finding out was, hey, I said about two weeks ago, I sent a package. It would have included a, a black mini Louisville Slugger baseball bat. They would, you know, a light went on. And they, you know, they I, all of a sudden I became their best friend. Oh, yeah, we got that. Because it's not like you know, hey, two weeks ago I sent you an email. I know you've gotten over a thousand since then. Do you remember my email? Because I knew that between the last two weeks, they probably didn't get any other mini Louisville Slugger baseball bats in the mail. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, so now we've connected. I heard all kinds of stories that, you know, somebody else wanted it and we had to fight over it and all that. And so, yeah, we looked at your materials and maybe we forwarded it to somebody that would be appropriate. They'd give me that person's name contact information and that's just what we needed I mean we needed to be in front of that right person and so they helped us they worked with us identifying who that individual is and then that would lead to the next you know a follow-up call and, and now we're you know we're scheduling our executive briefing the way we originally wanted to but this time it's with the right person again thanks to the introduction of, of others and so that and then and then what happens a lot of times you're leaving voicemail you know and, and but it is, executive assistants are really good about getting back and so uh, a lot of times that's who you're dealing with and then you follow up you follow their lead they'll give you new names and numbers to follow up with and you contact them and you're contacting them at the pleasure of your previous introduction I usually go about another two weeks and if I've not gotten return calls and all I've left is voicemail then I and then I follow up with email and again I could call back six months later and they would still remember that baseball bat now let's take a, a little bit of a closer look at that mailing we have a question here from Steve, was the mailing all in one package or mailed at one time? And it looks like you put together that brochure and a bat and, a, and a, that personal theme letter all in one package, right? Yeah, all in one package. It was kind of a one-time deal. You'll see I got some filler in there, so it doesn't appear to be a bomb or anything. And you know, and, and it's the, it's the first thing somebody's going to open. I mean, when you walk into your office uh, and, and get this, uh, you're you're going to say, "Oh, what's this?" And you're going to open it up, and that's just not the case with email. I, I guess. Daniel, I don't want to put you on the spot, but you know, there's, there's, there's the other part of this. Personal mail has really dropped incredibly in the last decade. And uh, the, part of that study was the 100 email a day. The other part of that study is you get a personal letter once every seven weeks. And, and so think of that, once every seven weeks. So if there's somebody I'm trying to reach, do I have a better chance of being one, uh, one out of 100 email a day or sending them something like this 
and I know they're not going to get a personal letter for another seven weeks, what, what do I have better chances? And so I guess I want to put you on the spot by asking you, when's the last time you got a personal letter at work? Yeah, that's a great point. <laughs> and I can't, I can't even remember. I think we, we talked about this a little earlier. If I, if I really think back maybe like three, six months ago, uh, from like a job interviewee I had and, you know, thanking me for the, for the job interview I, I did with them. But, uh, you know, and I think, I think part of the brilliance of what you did here, Bob, is a lot of times as marketers we follow the trend, you know, what's, what's the word cloud, what's everyone doing, mobile, social, and everything, and we just get kind of mixed in with the noise of that. And you really looked to zig where others zag and, and, as you said, really have that personal letter and that, that personal greeting with people. But another thing you did is that phone call follow-up to that personal letter. Um, we have a question here. Uh, from Cami, did you outsource your phone calls or did internals make those for you? How did you, how did you do the phone calling? Uh, no, candidly, uh, it was, we kept all that internally. Uh, we wanted to keep it personal. Uh, I, will, I will tell you, I probably made um, over half the calls myself and then we had uh, some other people on staff make others and, and again, we kept it in our, um, our database and our CRM, you know, we made notes of, of the successes. But again, the, the thought was to use that campaign to get introduced to the right person and set up meetings. And so it was, um, yeah, it was, in most cases, it, we kept it very personal and, and uh, it was always the people here. And that's where this campaign is great for an SMB marketer or hey, if you're a bigger company, you got more resources, you know, use inside sales or, or outsource if you have to. So it was that phone call, it was that email, it was setting those appointments, here are the results, very impressive. Let's get into a little bit more about what launched, as we said, that letter. We have a few questions about that. Um, Dan wants to know, how did you tie in the baseball bat to the marketing message? What information talking points did you put in the personal letter? Because I'm guessing that personal letter, as, as you asked me, how often do I get a personal letter? Really writing that personal letter uh, right was key. So what did you put in that letter? Yeah, that's a, good, that's a good question. So just sending a baseball bat out of the blue with a letter doesn't make any, you know, could be confusing. And so we did, we did have a little bit of a baseball theme and, and uh, uh, it was strike one, strike two, strike three. Uh, you know, and, and, and with problems. So at the beginning, we, we connected with, we started with the problem. You know, a lot of marketers like to do that. I think that's a good tactic. And we used the one, two, three strikes. Um, you know, and, and the last one, you know, it's a, it's a high fastball in the outside corner. You're caught looking, strike, strike three. And there's, there's, there's bullet points in there that they're going to uh, understand. And then on, a, a little bit later in the letter, we had a single, double, triple, home run, and, um, and those were parts of our solution that were all positive pieces. So we did tie it in with a baseball theme. And then this fall when we ran a football campaign, we did a mini leather football and we tied in teamwork, the importance of teamwork and football being the ultimate team sport. So there's a little bit of analogy and connection with whatever we sent. So that's the letter and we looked, there was a very uh, impressive meeting success rate. So a little farther in the funnel, meeting success rate. Uh, Susan on hashtag Sherpa webinar asks, what was the key script or offer made during the phone call? So how did, what did you do then when you actually got on the phone? Well, we, we confirmed they got it. We confirmed they got the piece. And, and again, uh, everyone did. I mean, it's uh, literally to, to a person. Everyone recalled getting it. And it was the EA often speaking on behalf of somebody else. And then again, we used that opportunity, that conversation to identify the right person for us to be speaking with. In our case, it, it, it wasn't going to be the CEO that we sent the stuff to, but we were going to use the CEO's office to help us to work with us to identify who is the right person because they have now seen what we do and they've got a better understanding and said, oh, this needs to be so-and-so, follow up with that person and, and, and at our request. And, and then that's when good things happen. So, um, you know, that, that's kind of how that conversation went. Now we're calling uh, the second person that we've been introduced to and sure they're gonna set a meeting with us now because they've been asked to do so and, 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 and good things happen from there. Excellent. So to tie it all up, uh, Jamina, marketing assistant, wa assistant wants to know how can I apply this to a fine arts photographer's business, a fine arts photographer's business. So what are the top takeaways you had, Bob, that, that marketers of all stripes can use in their own campaigns? I think, um, I, I think here, connect where others neglect, I think that makes perfect sense. I, I, I think using something that's different, again, personal mail, one, one personal letter once every seven weeks, uh, establish an offline connection, you know, get to know those persons, use the phone a little bit, and then email is very, very important. I mean, I didn't want to criticize email here because email is then when you follow up, you follow up with the EA, you may follow up with your, your audience that you're going to be doing a WebEx with or setting up a live meeting. Email then becomes a very, very important tool. 
And you know, it goes back to the basics, you know, knowing your product, knowing your audience, and then finding a way to reach them. And that, again, it, it, it may not work for everybody, but it certainly has worked for us, and, and we continue to, to, to do a lot of those practices today. And be original, certainly an original campaign, Bob. Thanks for joining us today. If you're watching, help us. We, we tried to be original this time with the Marketing Sherpa webinar and have that live stream. If you scroll down on that live stream page, you can take the survey, let us know what was helpful, what would you like to see us do on these Marketing Sherpa webinars to help you improve your own marketing campaigns. And just when you close out of the GoToWebinar, you can take that survey as well. So thank you for watching. And Bob, thank you so much for calling in today and sharing what you've learned from your campaigns. Sure, Daniel, my pleasure. And again, thanks to you guys and the fine staff at Marketing Sherpa. Our pleasure. Thanks for attending a webinar. Thank you.